Welcome, my friend. Sit beside me a while and listen to the story of Deirdre of the Sorrows. The story of Deirdre of the Sorrows is recorded in the Ulster cycle of Irish mythology. It's a tale of beauty, lust and death dating back to ancient Ireland. During the reign of King Cruhor Macnessa of Ulster, a baby girl was born to Felimi Macdal, a chieftain and bard of the Olu. The newborn girl was named Deirdre. The child was beautiful and the druid Cathbad made a prophecy. As the infant grew, her beauty would increase until she was the most beautiful woman in all of Ireland. However, the child would, because of her beauty, bring sorrow and war upon the country. When news of the child's birth and the prophecy reached Cruhor's capital, Evan Macca, his royal guards, the Red Branch Knights, decided that in order to spare Ireland the misery, they would take the child Deirdre and kill her. King Cruhor, however, ordered that the child should be placed in the care of the poetess Lee Barkham, so that when she reached the age of consent, he himself would marry her and have as his wife Ireland's greatest beauty. One day, in the midst of winter, Deirdre witnessed ravens feeding off the corpse of a lamb. Horrified at the sight, she promised that she would allow love into her heart only for a man whose hair was as black as a raven's wing, and whose lips would be as red as a lamb's blood. As she neared the age of maidenhood, she was walking on the ramparts of Evanmaka when she saw a young man approaching. He had night-black hair and lips as red as a lamb's blood, and he was the most handsome of men. Deirdre immediately knew that this was the love of her heart. Who is he? she asked Leah Barkham. That is Nisha, the eldest son of Uzna, the husband of Ebla, the daughter of Cathbad, who foretold of your beauty, answered the poetess. Why do you ask? Deirdre smiled and whispered, This is my love. Can you help me to meet him? The poetess agreed and arranged a meeting between the young pair. When Nisha saw Deirdre, he immediately fell deeply in love with her. Both knew that if King Cruhor were to discover their love, then he would have them killed. So Nisha confided in his two younger brothers, Anal and Ardan. They planned an escape out of Evan Maka, and northwards to Antrim, and crossed the sea to Alba. Eventually they found safety in Glen Eve, where they settled down to an enjoyable life. Back in Ireland, Cruhor's anger and jealousy grew fiercer by the day. His spies had discovered where Deirdre and the sons of Uzna had settled, However, it was in the kingdom of a Caledonian king, so there was very little that he could do. Crew Hor came up with a plan. He would trick an honest warrior to bring the little band home to Ireland, and then he would have his revenge on them. He looked at all his knights, each of them noted for their loyalty, bravery and honesty. Of all the knights, he saw warrior Fergus Macroth also possess the purest of heart. He called upon Fergus and made him leave for Alba, and to tell Deirdre and Nisha that he forgave them and wished them only happiness. He also needed Anal and Ardan back with his knights because they were too valuable to lose. Fergus and his two sons rode north to the Antrim coast and from there crossed over to the shores of Argyle, eventually making their way to Glen Eteve. The sons of Uznar were delighted to see Fergus, for they knew him to be an honourable man, and he relayed the king's message to them. Now the sons of Uzna were at that time feeling the pains of homesickness and were only too glad to hear of King Cruhor's forgiveness. But Deirdre still felt mistrust. It was only the honest reputation of Fergus that swayed her to return to Ulster. On the night of their return to Evan Macca, they were greeted and feasted by the Red Branch Knights and informed that in the morning they would meet the king. Deirdre was still worried, but the sons of Uzna and Fergus Macaroth assured her, saying the king would dishonour himself if he went back on his promise. In the morning, all the palace guards, warriors and people gathered with the returned exiles in the forecourt. Fergus was not present as he had been sent on an errand by the king, although his sons were with the exiles. King Cruhor appeared at the balcony and ordered the knights to seize Deirdre and kill the others. The sons of Uzna and the sons of Fergus rushed to defend Deirdre, but the knights were too many and too strong. The king called upon the sons of Fergus to surrender, and he would spare them. One, Boigny, did, but the other, Ilan Finn, refused to dishonour himself and fought on. 
One knight managed to slam a spear into Nisha's spine, and Deirdre, seeing her beloved fall dead to the ground, collapsed in sorrow and despair. Soon Nisha's brothers and Ilan Finn also fell, and Kruhor fell triumphant. However, the druid Cathbad, angered by the king's treachery, called down on him a terrible curse. Fergus Mac Roth returned to the palace and saw the butchery. He swore an oath of vengeance. Turning his back on the king and upon his own son, Boigny, he rode west to Connacht to serve Cruhor's mortal enemy, Queen Maeve. Cruhor then had Deirdre taken to his quarters, but she, in deep hatred, refused ever to speak to him. After a year, he grew tired of her sullen silence. His lust for her turned cold, and so he had her bound hand and feet and thrown into a chariot. She was sent as a reward to the man she hated most after Cruhor, Owen Mac Duracht, who had slain her beloved Nisha. On the way to Owen, she managed to throw herself from the chariot and smashed her brains out upon a rock. Her broken body was placed into the ground near where Nisha lay in death. Soon a tree grew out of each grave and grew in a close embrace. And so ends a sad story of Deirdre of the Sorrows. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If you did, please like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Have a safe journey home, my friend, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.